Haggai chapter 1. Haggai chapter 1 and verse 8. Please let's read it together. The warfare dimension. Make sure you write the topic. The warfare. I want to introduce you to a very foreign dimension of the blessings of God that many, many believers do not know. And this has been responsible for the limitations in the lives of families, in the lives of individuals you see what is happening in our nation now there is a lot of fear and listen the lord showed me something I, I hope that in one of the days i will have the opportunity to share i saw something in a vision that made me fear about certain things that was coming on the body of christ it's not exactly negative but it will have a negative effect. Let's continue. One, two, read. Go up to the mountain uh -huh, and bring wood. Stop. Stop. The prophet is writing by the Spirit. First instruction, go up to the mountain. Second instruction, bring wood. What is your purpose of going up the mountain? To bring wood. <laughs> Just follow me carefully. I don't know what wood is doing in the mountain. Because at the last time I checked, you don't grow woods on the mountain. The Bible says, go up to the mountain and bring wood. And then use that wood to build the house, not a house use the wood you get up the mountain to build the house and i will take pleasure in that house that was built from the wood that was gotten up the mountain and then he says and i will be glorified saith the lord go up to the mountain koinonia and bring wood use the wood that you bring to build my house are we together now of course prophetically he was talking about physical temples but now you know that the house of god is not a physical structure you know that so every time god talks about building his house he's talking of building his ecclesia you understand that theologically speaking the house of god today does not mean a building or a church it does not even just mean systems it means people so it takes wood to build people we all as living stones build into a spiritual house are we together now tonight go up the mountain and bring wood and build my house and i will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified when my house is built. Listen very carefully. There are, there are many instructions about the building of the Lord's house. And one of it, he tells us that it takes wood. Whatever that wood is, we know that is something you do not yet have. And so he says the location of that wood is up the mountain. Not to the forest. Go up the mountain, listen carefully, and get wood. And then with that wood, go and build my house. Matthew chapter 5. Quicken our eyes to see. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus was teaching in what we call the Beatitudes. He was teaching the principles of the kingdom. In fact, let's start from 4. Matthew chapter 4. What we know as the temptation of Jesus. Now, there are three levels of temptation that the devil presented to Jesus. I'm interested in the third one. The first temptation had to do with your individual hunger. Are we together now? Jesus had finished praying and fasting 40 days. And the first person he would meet would be Satan himself. 
And then Satan tells him, turn this stone to bread. Second temptation, he takes him up. The second temptation had to do with his spiritual convictions. Are we together? He took him to a holy city. Satan, holy city. Satan, holy city. Took Jesus up a holy city and set him on a pinnacle and said, Jesus, fall down. Throw yourself to the ground. It is written, he shall put his angels. So it was a temptation that related to his spiritual life. That related to his spiritual conviction. The first was his hunger, his individual life. And then he says, no, I've gone past that level. Then the second thing affected his faith. But the third was a very strange one. And that's what I want us to look at. Matthew chapter 4. If God is blessing you, say amen. amen. Verse 8. We are reading to 11. The third temptation. Read with me. We'll read verse 8 and then I'll continue. One to read. Again, the devil taketh him up into, stop, not towards, into. The devil taketh him. Who is the him? Your Jesus. Taketh him into an exceeding high mountain. And what happened when they got to that mountain? He stood from that mountain and saw the glory of the entire earth. That there is a mountain a man can stand. And from that mountain you can see the glory of the whole earth. This is the mountain that Satan took Jesus. There were many mountains. But he knew only one would be worth tempting Jesus in. And he took Jesus to that mountain. The Bible calls it an exceeding high mountain. And then he showed him the kingdoms of this world. And the glory of them next verse and say it to him ah, all these things what things the kingdoms and the glories i will give thee so the mountain is a place of exchange listen remember don't forget our scripture well, well i'm building something here go up to the mountain something you will do in the mountain will give you wood use that wood and come down come and build the house of god and the bible says god will be glorified so satan is negotiating a transaction here but there was a location he said jesus i want to talk to you but let's go up the mountain we don't do these kinds of discussion on a plain land he took him to an exceeding high mountain where it was only two of them and then he says this is i want to give that one is a deception because when you give something and demand something it's not giving it's business he used a very deceptive terminology he says i will give thee if thou will fall down i will give you pure water if you will give me 100 naira is is that is that charity no satan is negotiating something with Jesus your Jesus and look at the interesting system he starts by marketing something for him he says before we talk see first so that you will believe me look at the kingdoms and then look at their glories the wealth and then he says now that you have seen and are convinced let us discuss this is my proposal I will give you access from this mountain to all these kingdoms. They will be at your beck and call. What I will get in return, listen carefully, is that you will fall down and worship me. Now imagine, God forbid, but just imagine that Jesus agreed. What do you think would have happened? Jesus would have come down that mountain with strange influence that you cannot explain you, now you were not there all you know is that he bowed down and said satan i'm more interested in the kingdom and the glory oh king satan i acknowledge you as my lord i give you my heart and satan says okay as i agreed 
if satan tempted jesus how many other people has he taken to that mountain to say come forget about this let me show you how things happen in this earth and then he says look at this i will give you these kingdoms and the glory bow down to me not everybody will say no some people will say yes and will say this is the deal here you have here you have go down immediately they go down in two months their albums are all over the world regardless of what they sing and you say my god this guy is so skilled no something happened up the mountain i pray that god will open your eyes to understand what i'm teaching you tonight there are certain dimensions of the supplies of god that cannot happen by doing business with men you must do business with spirits.